Cops, have you written tickets to other cops? What happened during and after? Policed in a smaller town. 20,000 pop. For 8 years, I was a military transplant. Didn't know anyone locally when I was hired. Lots of good old boys and friends of friends that could get away with almost anything. Had a city council woman who believed no parking signs on her street didn't pertain to her. One particular shift about 2 a.m. Out of sheer frustration I guess. I found a truck parked in the street and decided to wake her and politely ask her to move it. Thank God for body cameras. Next morning at 9 a.m. I was awoken by a phone call from my superior that a formal complaint had been filed for vulgar language and intimidation by said councilwoman. Again. Thank God for body cameras. Body cameras are the best tool for law enforcement there is. It should have just been handled a little differently to be perfect. Good cops don't get into trouble for things they haven't done when a body camera can prove it and bad cops don't get away with murder just because they are surrounded by people willing to back them through any lie. The only problem is, I believe the body cameras should have more live syncing, not necessarily live streaming, but the camera could sync whenever it got close to a squad car or something. It sees the technology, and the people handling that data should in no way be related to the police department. There should be zero interaction between those reviewing the data and the police. No nepotism. No rubbing off backs. Just a centralized data center that won't lose some data when it's convenient. A body camera only works if it cannot be turned off. If you give officers discretion about when and where they can deactivate their cameras, then they will simply turn them off before they commit their crimes. I once pulled a deputy from a neighboring county over for a minor traffic violation, speeding under 15 miles per hour. As I approached the driver's side, the driver held his badge and it out the window. He stated he was off duty and armed with his service weapon. Before I could say anything else, he said I know I was speeding and I expect a citation. Not a warning or a verbal. He handed me his driver's license, registration and insurance. I still asked if he had a reason for the excess. He smiled and said no excuses. Go ahead and cut the ticket. I went back to the patrol car, wrote up the violation and came back. I handed back his information. He took it and said, something like, it's good we can hold each other to the same standard as JQP. We briefly chatted her about mutual acquaintances. He drove off and I went back to work. When his court date came up, he showed up in uniform and in front of everyone. He pled guilty before the magistrate. He then paid the clerk. He could have just paid online or mailed it in. In my state you aren't required to appear in court if you've paid the ticket prior. He made a point to show everyone that he wasn't above the law. We need more cops like him. We need more people like him. Very respectable. My father had to arrest a retired NYPD officer for a DWI in NC. It was interesting to say the least. He was a dick. Acted like my father was disrespecting the badge by arresting another officer. Did your dad say anything about disrespecting? Oh, I don't know the law. Committing a crime and trying to use the badge as a get out of jail free card seems hideously disrespectful to the badge. I always had a thing against drunk drivers when I was a policeman found out pretty quick that cops made up a high percentage of offenders, late 1970s, and I was pretty quickly ostracized after locking a few of them up. And I was pretty quickly ostracized after locking a few of them up. On the bright side, you probably saved a few lives. Found out pretty quick that cops made up a high percentage of offenders, late 1970s. From what I've heard, not much has changed. Not a cop, but this happened near what I lived.
cop gave a ticket to the police commissioner. Speeding ticket for Commissioner New Zealand Police web page. Edit. Typo. Mr. Robinson stated that he was gutted to have been so stupid and regretted putting one of his staff in the position of having to issue an infringement to the top serving police officer. Not a statement I hear in the US sadly. Classic New Zealand. P.O. Whoa. Commissioner Robinson, mate, you were doing a hundy in a 70. PC. Yeah, I'm pretty gutted I, must have missed the sign and left the cruise control rolling. P.O. Oh I, you're gonna be pretty gutted in a few minutes too. I'm gonna have to write this up. PC. Yeah, nah, all good mate. That's fair enough. I'll just wait here in the car with the missus and kids until you get back. P.O. All good bro. I'll be back in few I. PC. Sweet. P.O. Chop. Pretty classy commissioner. Realizing it must have been awkward for that poor soul to give his superior a ticket. Either that or it was the best day of the young fellow's life sticking it to his boss. The local head of the police department here gave himself a ticket recently. He realized he'd parked in a loading zone. He'd just been telling his team how they had to respect laws around parking and zoning. Props to him. I really respect the guy. He also tries to encourage the state government not to increase police funding and instead spend more on social work, early intervention drug programs, etc. He says policing is what happens when all other measures have failed. He strongly supports safe drug use rooms, needle supply and disposal programs, detox programs, etc. He's changed his mind on various proposed rules around things like restricting new probationary drivers from having high-powered cars after examination of the evidence showed that the proposed rule would be ineffective or was not justified by the stats, we need more people like him. A friend's father was the commander of the local state police post, he lived by a railroad track that had been out of use for several decades yet there was still a stop sign at the crossing by his house. Everyone knew the sign was obsolete and no one stopped for it. He was pulled over by a local town police officer and issued a ticket for running the stop sign. Officer told my friend's father, just because you are a state patrolman doesn't give you the right to run this stop sign. A couple days later, friend's father was going to lunch in his state cruiser and the town officer speeds by him in his town cruiser. State trooper pulls him over and gives him a speeding ticket. Friend's father tells him just because you are a town cop and driving a police car doesn't give you the right to speed and break the law when you are not responding to a call. Not a cop, but just wanted to share this video posted a while ago of a cop arresting a drunk driving lieutenant who kept refusing. YouTube web page. I feel bad for the cop who pulled this cop over. I can hear in his voice he does not want to do this but I am glad he did it. Seriously, bless this guy. I don't want to arrest a fellow cop, but we are not above the law. He sounded like he was getting really damn emotional when he pulled out the taser. Poor dude. I can't believe a grown ass man who's a lieutenant no less, could act like this. He was shit faced. This is so embarrassing. The fact that it's forever on YouTube. I hope it haunts his stupid fired ass. The video quoted it as super drunk driving. I don't know if that's a thing but it was nearly 24 minutes of talking before they got him out of his car, handcuffed and in the back of the squad car. Professional police de-skeleton talk rather than using unreasonable force when instead they can just talk someone down for a while. These cops should train to this level of interaction for everyone. No injuries for all involved. No extra paperwork. Citizens more quickly realize their error, cooperate and get better court outcomes, and cops earn respect for doing their job professionally.
The arresting officer handled that very well. He didn't act like a dick but at the same time he was firm, calm, and consistent with his messaging 100% professionalism. Can you imagine the charges any other person would have received if they resisted orders like this drunk cop did? Yes, nothing scandalous or anything. It was something basic that I would not typically ticket for. I think failing to stop when entering a public road from a business or something. Anyway, the individual immediately pulled out some out of state law enforcement it instead of his license. I had to awkwardly tell him to provide the license, insurance, registration and he went on about his years of service in whatever state. The rest of the stop went as usual. Once I could get him to provide the documentation, I ran his information and served him a citation. It drives me crazy when people try and pull the Leo card. Just, be cool. He must have plead guilty and paid it, though, because I had no further involvement. Agreed 100%. You should never pull the I'm a police officer card. Ike if I was a cop and someone said that to me I'd ticket them just for saying that. I'm a firefighter so due to professional courtesy I've been let go once because I was in uniform. If I'm not in uniform I don't tell them what I do unless they ask. I was being stupid and got caught so if they ticket me so be it. That being said I've never had a ticket before either because cops in my area are generally nice and will let you off with a warning if you're a good person and honest. Which I think like to think is the norm in most areas. To be fair my department's policy is that we must inform any law enforcement officers that we work for the sheriff's department. Anytime I have an interaction with a police officer I pull out my DL and my department in because that's what I have to do. What's the reasoning behind being required to share that information? Not a cop so I'm curious how this works. It may have something to do with officers generally carrying concealed handguns. His department may have decided that duty to inform applied to its deputies. A police officer came into the Home Depot I work at and tried to return a weed whacker because it didn't work. He was in uniform still. We explained that because uh, he didn't have a receipt and b. The particular model he was trying to return was pretty old that we don't even sell it anymore and haven't for a while that it couldn't be returned. He basically said that he was a cop and that we were committing a crime for selling him a faulty weed whacker. He then proceeded to walk over to the garden center, pick up a brand new weed whacker and walk out the door with it. This is theft. Police were called and we all watched a police officer get arrested. Crazy shit. A state trooper pulled the cop card when I worked at the depot. He was buying concrete. I started to load a partial pallet in back of his half ton truck and he wanted me to put the full one in so he only had to make one trip. Your truck can't handle that much weight. I'm a cop. Yeah you are. I loaded the full pallet up and watched his truck squat. Sat right down on the tires as soon as he tried to drive off. I didn't help him unload it. That logic though, sir. But physics, I'm a cop. But, you see, gravity, I'm a cop. If gravity could just stop bothering cops and let them go about their business we'd probably have less shooting of unarmed gravities. Just saying. They have a get themselves out of jail free card, but not a get you and your company out of a lawsuit because you did what they asked and it was an safe card. I think this might be considered as being under duress though which can change some things. That's a major violation of policy at my department. You are not allowed to use the uniform to gain gratuities or favor. That's just about every department but some interpret it differently. I have heard of departments that think getting half off your meal at Denny's is a violation and others that think it only applies to outright bribery. Not me, but my pastor was a police chaplain in our town. 
he wrote a sheriff's deputy a ticket for parking his cruiser in a no parking zone. It was either a school zone or a fire hydrant, and it wasn't for police business so he couldn't argue out of it. Shit storm from the deputy about he's a cop and you can't ticket cops. About three weeks later my youth group, Lyo, has a trip to go bowling in a city the next county over. While douchebag deputy decides to pull a U-turn through the grass median and pull over my pastor with a bunch of us high schoolers, pulls our pastor out and walks him back to his cruiser to give him a ticket for speeding. THB I'm not sure if pastor was wasn't speeding. Pastor comes back and said he got a speeding ticket and wonders what the deputy is doing in the next county over, and not like a stone's throw from the line. We're talking miles over the line where he shouldn't be. My town had recently had a big stink about our local cops not being where they should be, so that the sheriff's office was doing that to rile some folks. Reminds me of that scene in Porky's where the corrupt cops messed with the high schooler's car and issued him a ticket. Only for the cop in the county the high schooler lives in to stick it to Porky and his crannies after they crossed back the county line. My father is a cop. He once pulled over his superior for drunk driving. His boss expected special treatment. My dad arrested him. He ended up leaving the department because he was warned. If you don't have our backs, then don't expect us to have yours. Edit. To clear it up. Odd was my dad who left the department. A kid my sister went to high school with called 911 because his dad was drunk and hitting the mom. The police did not arrest the dad but they took him away in the police car calmed down the mother and made sure she wasn't seriously injured, then turned to the kid, 15 stroke 16 years old, and rips into him about how irresponsible he was to call 911 and that his dad would be fired from his job if he got arrested, then went on about how they would lose the house and his parents would probably get divorced if his dad lost his job over this. Dad was a police sergeant in the next town over that was well known to the responding officers. Something sort of similar happened to my sister. Her probation officer raped her multiple times, threatening to call in false positives and send her up to prison if she didn't have sex with him. Someone reported it, anonymous source, and they busted him in the act. While they were questioning her they kept saying did you realize this man has a family? Did you stop to think of what could happen to his kids if they found out and she said, did he realize he had a family? He ended up getting off scot-free and transferred to a different county working in a women's jail. County never, or has yet to, press charges. This isn't even remotely on the same level of abuse your sister went through but reminded me of something that happened to my sister, when she was in 8th grade, probably 12 or 13, not like this should matter anyway, a guy swerved his car over to her and started yelling at her to get in, luckily she was a block away from our house, so when he started to get out of the car, she ran home in time, when we called the cops to report it, the first thing they asked her was well what were you wearing at the time this was before they even asked for a description of him or the car. They continued to ask her questions about how it could be her fault, and never even caught the guy. What is the dealing with cops victim blaming in America? This really angers me babies. Toddlers and young children get sexually abused you don't ask what they were wearing it's never about what you're wearing should not matter. It's distressingly common. I had a family member who was repeatedly raped by an older man. And when the story finally came out I was asked point blank whether she could have been leading him on. She was 12 when it started, after all. I was so gobsmacked that anyone would think that, that I was honest or speechless. The lengths that the investigators went to, to victim blame, if not outright slut shame, this poor girl were disgusting. Wow, I'm so sorry for your sister. 
that poor woman. I hope someone ends up shiving him in the prison. And this attitude is why so many kids grow up with an inherent dislike of authority in general and cops in particular. Would probably get divorced. That sounds like a good alternative. I'd personally rather be homeless and safe than live in a house with someone who beats me. What the fuck? What the actual fuck? What the fucking actual fucking fuck? Holy shit. That's fucked up. Good on your dad though. Was he able to continue being a cop in another city or did he end up with a ruined career? He ended up enlisting in the military shortly after that, and then continued on later as the part-time volunteer officer. I'm proud of him. He's got principles and integrity. Principles and integrity got him drummed out of the police. RLY makes you think. Well if it took you this long to realize police stations are full of corrupt assholes, you're not paying attention. Glad things worked out. Doing the right thing takes some serious balls sometimes. If you don't have our backs, then don't expect us to have yours. And this is why a lot of people hate American police. More bad cops we have today would be well behaved if they could be fired or charged for their fucks up. The fact that police officers still have this mentality pisses me off to this day. Your father is a good man. Integrity and safety of the, the citizens of the country is more important than letting someone off for being a cop. If he wanted pro-revenge he probably could have gone to the newspaper and told them the whole thing. I'm sure they'd love to print something like that and the superior would have been forced to step down or have his reputation ruined. But at the same time any time to police saw the father again he'd probably be harassed with being pulled over. So one less good cop out there. Good cops getting forced out by the massive number of bad cops. Sounds about right. Hard to respect a cop these days. Screw that superior. Look at it the other way. If that superior killed or injured somebody under the influence the officer who pulled him over would be liable for letting his superior getting a pass and going on to hurt or kill somebody. Not me but my old criminal justice teacher, who used to be a cop, once told us a story about how he got pulled over by a cop from a different city, but still the same county. He tried telling him he was a cop and showed his badge but the cop wasn't having it. He got so annoyed he got out of his car and walked up the cop writing the ticket and started mouthing off to him which definitely didn't help. The next couple of months, my teacher's city and the other cop's city got into a ticket war and would write each other tickets if they saw that they were a cop from one of the two cities. So basically they got into a police ticket war. This is one example of why Super Troopers is a documentary and not a movie. Friend of mine is Maryland State Police. From the stories I've heard about their interactions with Baltimore City cops, he'd agree with that statement. He said his barracks pretty much used it as a training aid the moment it showed up on DVD. So he expected to get out of a ticket because he was a cop? Your teacher doesn't come out of that story looking great. My boyfriend arrested a lady who worked for the county and she was drunk off of her mind. She was driving along the railroad tracks and swerving between lanes over the speed limit. Then she proceeded to use the I know how this works and I know how to get out of trouble speech. She was arrested for a DUI and fired from her job. I worked as a tribal officer for 25 plus years and I had issued tickets to other officers, correctional officers and politicians. It didn't matter to me who that person was that I had arrested. I also arrested other cops, and ordered my own brother to be arrested. I wasn't the primary officer or on scene. The responding officers was trying to be helpful by letting me know so I could take him home. I was a sergeant at the time and never gave breaks to officers or family members. Nothing ever happened to me. 
I was threatened but nothing ever came from it. Speaking as a chief of police was different. When I was being interviewed I told the tribal council, who did the hiring for the chief position, that I don't play politics. I did my job and got things done 14 months later. I was allied and told that the tribal council was talking about me and by the time I get there I was removed. My appeals process was never followed either. In some TV show I've been watching, the tribal police can only deal with misdemeanors. Anything above that is a federal thing. There was a big issue on the TV show because the feds don't care or whatever. There were also weird laws about if white people were the ones committing the crimes on reservation land. Basically, I guess what I'm asking are there weird laws regarding this stuff that people unfamiliar with tribal police forces might not be aware of, or was this just TV show stuff? Not me, but my dad, 29 years CHP, once pulled over a dispatcher for something like expired registration. They tried to worm out of it along the lines of professional courtesy, but dad wasn't having it and issued the citation. Not long after, my mom gets pulled over for speeding at less than 5 over, and hears the officer on the radio confirming her identity. There's a price for principal, which is a shame. Most places you can't get a ticket for going less than 10% over the posted speed limit. Sort of a room for minor adjustments and stuff. So even if they give a ticket all you have to do is contest it by saying you weren't technically speeding. Just for future reference. Edit. The real leeway comes from the fact that at any legal speed a few miles an hour over is entirely plausible if you are maybe going down a hill or barely push on the accelerator a little too hard. See how much effort it takes to make your car go 8 miles per hour faster 10% of 80, which is one of the highest, if not the actual highest speed limit, and you'll see why 10% is pretty reasonable room for error. The only time I think I have ever pulled over encountered another law enforcement officer is traffic accident related. One accident I witnessed myself while investigating another accident. Roads were icy and we had about 5 accidents one after another. I watched this deputy cause the accident, mostly due to his bald tires. I cited him. I got called into a neighboring city to investigate a traffic accident where the cop was at fault. Had to cite him as well. That being said I've been cited by other cops. Recently was driving to Vegas and a state trooper got me. I had a firearm on the console next to me and notified him. Let him know it was right there in view and I was a cop. He cited me for the full amount over just because I was a cop and should known better. One of our officers got arrested for DUI last year by our neighboring agency. Got arrested on a Friday. Quit the following Tuesday. Edit just remembered another one. Got called onto the highway to investigate an accident involving a trooper in her patrol vehicle. She rear-ended the person in front of her. Watched the dash camera in her car. Traffic began to slow. Everyone started to skid due to black ice and she bumped the vehicle in front of her. I did not cite her, but did list as is at fault on the state accident form. Created throw away to answer this question. I have absolutely written tickets to other cops, and for several reasons. 1. They know better too. It's hypocritical. They are doing something they would write tickets for in their home jurisdiction 3. It's disrespectful. When they flash a badge or something, they know they are asking me to make an ethical compromise. Now, if they are doing something that I would 50 stroke 50 give a warning for to an average person, they're vastly more likely to get a warning. Think 8-9 over. Cell phone. Same with dismissible offenses. For example no driver license in possession. Something that would get dismissed by the court for anyone by law. But if it's something I would 100% write a ticket for, they're not going to get a warning instead. 
some cops are very respectful, and will only say something after the stop is done and over with. Some you can tell just because they act slightly out of the ordinary. For example they'll address you properly. Trooper deputy officer, put their hands on the wheel, roll all the windows down, etc. Some try to mention it on the sly. I have my off-duty weapon with me as a favorite. Others will literally hang their badge out the window as they come to a stop. I mean, really this also happens with military. They hand their military it over with driver license. Anyway, that's it. You can tell some get a little salty when they realize they are getting a ticket. But none have argued, because there is absolutely nothing for them to stand on. Edit. Today I have learned an important thing about military handing over their id. I will henceforth disregard it as an attempt to get out of the ticket. Thanks for everyone's comments on that. It was something I honestly had no idea about. Hand their military id over with driver license. The first time I was ever stopped buddy was driving. Was because I as a passenger wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Swear to Christ I thought that a passenger needing a seatbelt applied to minors. But that applies only to backseat passengers here in MI. Ignorance isn't an excuse though. Anyway, deputy gets done with his spiel. Informs us of the reason for the stop and asks if I have my license. And walks back to his cruiser. Buddy turns to me and asks if I have my military id. Yeah, why? Let me see it. I hand it to him. And he hangs it out the window. What are you doing? Letting him know we have something to show him. Question mark? Dude, come on. I'm not looking to get out of the ticket. I did something wrong. I know. But I might be ticketed too for letting you. Deputy comes back. Looks at the id. And asks what company I'm with. Oh shit. I tell him. At the time it was an infantry company in the NG. Oh no shit. I'm with Charla company. Yeah no. I was gonna give you ticket. But I'll let you off with a warning. Point is. I felt super slimy for using it as an get out of jail free card. My dad always wonders why I never go after discounts. Some people have that mentality. But it always never sat well with me. I don't like getting discounts. Or the Veterans Day meal. It took a few years. But I finally figured out why they make me uncomfortable. One I have a job. I make a comfortable living and I'm compensated adequately. Anybody with a job is likely working as hard as I am. So I shouldn't get special treatment. Yeah. I get deployed. And I've been shot at. But that was the deal. Too honestly I feel like it's a social cop out. If you asked people if the military is well supported in America. They would likely say yes. We've got yellow magnets on our cars. Most McDonald's will give you 10% off. Applebee's will microwave a free meal for you once a year. Hell yeah the military has great support. These things are nice. And I do appreciate it. I really do. But they detract from the bigger issues. Vets are committing suicide in droves. The VA is overworked, underfunded, and varying degrees of disaster. Different benefits are constantly on the chopping block. We have real problems. But people see that a country star had lunch on base and assume we're good. 3. I'm jaded. But I fully believe they most companies use these things as clever marketing. Not to show any support. And it bothers me to be used in that way. Mongolian BBQ sends me a free mealy mail for my birthday every year. My birthday is on Veterans Day. It's my work around since I also don't pull the Veterans Day thing. But it's annoying to see the brand freaking new private waving that fucking card around. I agree with you. When I was a new private, I was broke as hell. I used every discount I could get 90% off of a train ticket when traveling in uniform. Yes, please. Most officers I knew would not use any military discounts. 
The discounts in Norway are aimed at broke as conscripted personnel, not for people earning adequate wages. Hey, it can work the other way too though. Back in the day I was I and I Carter with a reserve unit. One of the reservists was a gunny and his day job was a state trooper. He once pulled over a LCPL on a Friday for speeding and gave him a ticket. Then on Saturday when they showed up to drill he hassled that poor LCPL all day. So he got a ticket. And he also had to drain pad eyes with a plastic spoon. I can only assume you intentionally made this unintelligible for civilians. For the civilians. Back in the day I was a full-time marine in a reservist marine company. Full-timers do all the administrative work in between reservist weekend drills. One of the reservists was a sergeant and his day job was as a state trooper. He once pulled over a lance corporal, lower rank than sergeant for speeding and issued a traffic citation. Then on Saturday when they showed up to drill he hassled that poor Lance Corporal all day. So he got a ticket. And he also had to do stupid chores the military comes up with to make menial tasks even more annoying. I sure hope this is one of the 40 languages those Google earbuds translate in real time. Was in an accident with a cop. Cop was chasing a suspect without lights and siren. Pulled out of cross street without stopping and I hit his car. No one injured, but totaled my car. Probably same for police car. Other police came. Didn't even ticket me for not wearing my seat belt. Did give ticket to officer. Sitter paid to replace car. Very professional. Note I was dressed as a professional but did not tell them I was an attorney. So I in them a letter and my CO told our command to always hand over our license with our millet. Is this rude in any way? I don't want someone thinking I want special treatment because I'm in the military. Was told the same in 1999 and if you are on leave hand them the leave papers to if in transit. Thank you for being a good officer, but please don't just let people using their cell phone while driving get off with a warning. The driver who seriously injured my cousin was texting at the wheel. When asked why she would do something that stupid, she said the last time I got caught, I only got a warning so I felt like I could get away with it again. It's such a dangerous thing to do. There shouldn't be any just a warning this time going on out there. I'm glad you are thoughtful and considering. I was recently pulled over at a deliberate speed trap. It was very obvious it was this small town source of revenue and the cop was a total dick. It made me wonder how corrupt a lot of cops really are. It made me fear cops instead of root for them. It made me wonder how corrupt a lot of cops really are. Now, be careful with the word corrupt. He may have been a dick, which isn't ideal, obviously, but those are two different things. Comma it made me fear cops instead of root for them. Yeah, there are jerk cops just like there are jerks in any other part of society. It's unfortunate but true. Try and not let that officer's attitude spoil your opinion of law enforcement as a whole. I know that's hard when your limited experience is negative, but the vast majority are good. I don't think anyone has an issue with the ratio of good-bad cops. It's the fact that there are not adequate mechanisms in place to prevent bad cops from being held accountable for their actions or reoffending. What's up with the whole military and thing? I've never been in the situation myself, but I was told it's generally good practice to hand over my military and along with my license. Is it considered a dick move? I don't think most of us are trying to get special treatment or anything. If I recall from when my parents were in the Air Force, you can retain residence where you choose and your resident state driver's license doesn't expire so long as you present it with an active duty military aid. So it's not necessarily an attempt to get out of the ticket. I don't know if the laws have changed in the last decade. 
my sister's a cop. She would give anyone a ticket if they were doing something stupid. Told me she gave a cop from a neighboring town a speeding ticket. He said what about professional courtesy? She said that's what I was thinking. Professional courtesy would be not driving 65 in a 35 in the town where I work. We have a street racing law in Ontario, Canada that if you are going 50 km per hour over the limit they can tow and impound your car without due process. Makes sense with a 40k limit but less sense at 100 km per hour limit on the highways. At that point you are speeding not racing as traffic usually moves at 120-130 normally. Anyway. Cops running a speed trap on the highway snag an on-duty officer in an unmarked car from a different detachment. Charged her. Impounded the car. Shitstorm loosened. Edit. Link. Police officer charged with street racing the star webpage. I mean. 165 in a 100 is pretty bad. Even if traffic was going 120-130. In my experience as an American, US is 65 miles per hour on most freeways, though it's not hard to find traffic going 75-80, which roughly matches what the article says, but the equivalent to 165 is like 95-100 miles per hour. That's a big difference even with traffic above the speed limit. 95-100 in a 65 is way too fucking fast. Edit. I have done it. It is way too fast. It's not hard to find traffic going 75-80. Honestly, 75-80 is more or less the rule on every freeway I've ever driven on. You go 65. At best you're going to piss everyone. Including the cops. Off and at worst you're going to get in an accident. I was issued a citation once, coming home from vacation. 10 hour drive. I had been obeying all traffic laws but when we hit my state and then my county I felt safe and stepped on it. Lit up with blue lights almost 2 minutes later. I immediately noticed a second officer staying back by the vehicle. Since it's customary for officers in my area to have their own unit I figured this guy was a trainee. He identified himself, his agency and reason for stop. I produced my driver's license, insurance and registration and politely informed him that I had a gun in the vehicle. He asked if I had a concealed license, I said number. That should have led him to ask me why I was carrying and at that point I would have informed him I was an off-duty deputy sheriff. He didn't. Just said okay and walked off. Ten minutes later he comes back with a citation. Ask me for my phone number. To write in the citation. And the name of my employer. So I said something county sheriff's office. I'm county 45. At this point he asked me why I didn't tell him I was a cop. I told him that it wasn't something I was allowed to do off the bat like that and I wasn't playing that card. Took my citation and drove off. Got a call two minutes later from his FTO apologizing and asked me to pull over and wait on him. He voided the citation and apologized. Nothing for him to apologize for but I did tell him he needed to address the whole I have a gun thing with his rookie. Hello sir, do you have anything on you I need to be aware of? I have a loaded semi-automatic pistol. Alrighty then. You just get comfortable whilst I run your details. My grandmother was a police officer some time ago, and while not another officer, she ended up arresting a local government official. He had been drunk driving, and crashed his car into multiple parked cars, street lights and finally a building, doing ridiculous amounts of damage, but he was able to walk away and ride to jail, after she booked him, in 4 inch heels I might add. Her superiors freaked the fuck out and demanded she release him because of who he was. If I recall correctly, she told them they would have to do it themselves. 
pretty sure all the charges were wiped and he went home that night. She quit shortly after the incident. Before that, she was in the Navy. After law enforcement she became a trauma nurse and now she's very happily retired haha. <laughs> Not a cop but I did have this encounter with a cop that ended with him being arrested. I was living in a fairly gun friendly state. It was Pennsylvania. Carry permits not required for a pistol unless you were carrying one concealed, including transporting one in the cabin of your car. I had one for work. My background was as an insurance adjuster. I found myself, for a time, doing insurance fraud investigation for a private investigator. After an incredibly overzealous neighbor decided to assert dominance over the parking spot in front of his house by smashing my windshield with a baseball bat. I was in the car and I was watching someone a block away that had nothing to do with this clown. It was decided that I would be carrying from then on. After a very long day of surveillance that started at 4 a.m. I stopped by the gas station at the end of my block to fill up the tank and get some snacks before tucking in for the night. I had a rare full weekend off and I was itching to get home. As I was paying I must have shifted my coat to where the guy behind me in line saw I had a gun holstered on my hip. He interrupts my transaction to demand to know if I have a car permit. I tell said stranger to mind his own business and I continue paying. Concerned stranger pulls out a badge and tells me that he is a municipal police officer of a small town about 10 miles away. He, again, demands my permit and it. I observe that we are not in said small town 10 miles away and therefore, here in larger town beneath our feet, he is just a regular citizen. He informs me that I am not to leave as I'm being detained. He's calling the city police and I'm in deep shit. His words. For resisting. I just want to get my beef jerky, chips and Mountain Dew home. But, okay. Apparently we're doing this. City police arrived within about 10 minutes. They separate us. City cop asks me about the gun. Do you have a permit? Yep. Here it is. I'm also an insurance investigator and I just got off work I hand him the permit, my employer's at card and the badge, issued by the county, in that state, cop is super chill, he goes back to his car, comes back a few minutes later and hands me everything, thanks me for not being a dick, all the while, Barney Fife is being a complete dick and is making demands of the city cops. This guy basically wanted me charged with everything shy of murder and they weren't complying because, well, I didn't break any laws. Apparently when he wouldn't show some stranger his that didn't work, he decided to up his game by telling the cop that I looked like I was about to rob a store and was just going for my gun when he stopped me. Now, this was a special kind of stupid move for a few reasons. Not the least of which being that there were witnesses to him being an asshole and it was a convenience store with surveillance cameras. It didn't rise to that level. However, as a quick conversation with the clerk indicated he was full of crap. So I'm about to head out when one of them says to him. I wasn't aware that Town X had its own police department. When did you start there? Well. I'm actually the town constable but if you read the state constitution that allows me to serve as the chief law enforcement officer of the town where I am elected. All kinds of nope. Cop cuts him off and tells him to put his hands behind his back. To my dying days I think my happiest memory may be recalling the look of confused horror on his face when he realized that these cops weren't going to comply with his little arrest fantasy and that he was going to jail. Constables are elected, and they do have peace officer status, but they also seem to have a serious issue with overstepping their authority in that particular state. PA constable arrested. Google search web page. My wife is a trooper. She was driving to work one morning with the cruiser as she was double backing shifts. On the highway, 
A car comes flying up from behind her then devices to pass her and a bunch of other cars at a speed high enough that she decides to pull them over. Never pass the highway pace car. Kids. Guy pulls over. She does all the normal cop stuff then gets out and starts walking up. She notices the guy hiding something out the window at her. Walks closer and sees it's a badge. She acknowledges the guy. Asks for license. Registration. Insurance and he keeps pointing the badge at her. She asks again for his info. He shows her the badge harder which just further annoyed her. She acknowledged the badge. Asks again for his info. He finally relented and gave it over. She wrote him a ticket. He goes to work to his tiny local station and complains to his boss about the bitch trooper who pulled him over and gave him attitude. His boss calls her boss. Her boss sends his boss the recording of the stop. He is no longer an officer. I have a feeling his boss was looking for any reason to be rid of him. And is now a security guard at a hospital. You can definitely pass cops on the highway. They must get so frustrated by the mountains of cars that they get caught up in because everyone around them starts doing five under. The greatest driving moment in my life was on a three lane highway. I was driving up to a group of eight cars. Four in the left lane. Four in the right lane. Middle lane was empty. They were all doing 105 km per hour in a 110 km per hour zone. I pulled into the middle lane and kept my current speed on 120 km per hour, which pretty much had me blast through the group of cars. The second car from the front in the left lane was a cop, so everyone was too scared to pass out speed up. I used to date her SSGMP and she said she took it at her command sergeant major, top MP on the base, for speeding. He had an attitude during the stop but then called her into his office the next day and thanked her and said she did a good job. I pulled over a red Corvette convertible with California plates for going almost 50 in a 30 miles per hour zone. I was a cop in Oregon. As I approached the Corvette, the driver flipped open his badge and showed it to me, not saying a word. I asked him for his driver's license. He looked down at his badge not saying anything. I again asked for his license, and he asked me if I couldn't see his badge. I said that I could, and that I could also buy a badge off of eBay. He finally gave me his California driver's license. I gave him a ticket for speeding, and he complained and moaned and said he was gonna write my supervisors. He said this is why cops can't trust other cops. Never heard another word from the guy. I took it at an air marshal one time, not a police officer, but still within the law enforcement community. He was going 65 in a 35. He was about to hit a 25 zone right by our elementary school and showed no signs of slowing down. I happened to be driving out to take a report saw him flying into town and flipped on the radar. I was no longer working traffic at the time. But that was way too fast heading into town so I flipped around and pulled him over. As I approached his convertible, the music was blaring. He did not bother to turn it down. When I instructed him to do so he flashed his it, as if that explained everything. He seemed shocked that I insisted he turn his music down and requested his driver's license and registration. He explained, while still holding up his it, that he was a federal air marshal and did not have time to chit chat. I smiled and informed him he should have thought about that before he went flying through town at 65 miles per hour. I added that he could speed the process up by providing me with the documentation I requested. After some grumping he finally produced the information. I wrote him a ticket. The attitude cost him any chance at me taking it easy on him. If he was shocked when I made him give me his license and insurance, he was doubly shocked when I produced the ticket and told him his court date. Generally speaking I hate giving traffic citations. But sometimes it can be enjoyable. 
I had a message waiting for me in a few hours when I swung back to fill out some paperwork. His supervisor had called and wanted to give me a chance to explain myself before he called the assistant chief to report my behavior. I offered to bring the chief, who was in the office that evening, onto the phone for him so we could discuss. He declined. After he dropped the huff and puff we discussed the citation. I walked him through the traffic stop and the behavior of his subordinate. He apologized for wasting my time. He let slip this individual was a bit of a hothead so the behavior was not totally surprising. Though it was unacceptable. The air marshal called back the next day and apologized for his behavior. In a voicemail. Then he showed up in court a month later to fight the citation. I mentioned to the city attorney that I still had his voicemail apology, which included him admitting he was driving way too fast. The city attorney passed that information along. He paid the ticket and we all went about the rest of our day. Similar sort of situation but was not to cops. I went to college in a small town with one stoplight. This town had train tracks near that intersection. Apparently the trains were supposed to slow down while going through the town. But never did. One officer set a speed trap for the train and then followed through with citing the conductor with a speed violation. The railroad got the message after that and they did slow down. However they would alert their slow presence by blowing the horn the entire way through the town. While obeying the speed regulation. Absolutely, off-duty cops are some of the biggest bitches I've had to deal with while working. If they even mention the word courtesy, instant ticket because that looks bad on everyone. I give everyone the same courtesy. I stop a lot of cars but don't write a lot of tickets. If it's something I normally write for, I write it. If it's not, then I don't. I did have the pleasure of arresting a retired officer for DWI not too long ago. Dude was wasted and decided pissing in a crowded parking lot was a good idea. As a teenager I got pulled over for speeding but did not get a ticket. The cop looked at my license and asked me do you know Jay? So and so and I innocently said yes, that is my dad. The cop says well as a courtesy we don't give tickets to other cops or their families and he let me go with a warning my dad is not a cop. Turns out there is a cop in my city with my same last name Jason so my dad's name is Gimson so I got super lucky. I got out of a few tickets as a teenager because my dad was a paramedic in our small town. Nothing too crazy, mostly out till light couple miles over the speed limit sort of thing. I've also gotten out of a ticket unintentionally for being a nurse. I didn't bring it up. He asked where I was going cause it was midnight so I told him I had just gotten off work and was heading home. He asked where I worked and when I told him the hospital he totally changed his attitude from giant raging turd to well alright have a nice night. I know an a physician in a big city, when she treats a cop, he'll give her his card with Shivas, for example, written on the back, if she gets pulled over for a violation, she'll hand the card to the officer and drive away, the officer will take it into the station and claim his bottle of Shivas from the cop who was treated in the air. That's corrupt as hell, and I should be outraged. But the pay people like EMTs get, when society shits all over you, I'll live with some corruption to give them a break, reluctantly. Not a cop, but my grandfather was NYPD back in the 70s and got injured pretty severely while on duty, well, my grandmother was leaving the hospital he was in and got pulled over for speeding. The officer asked where she was coming from and she subtly dropped that she was visiting her husband who was an officer and was injured. Cop basically tipped his hat, wished her a good day and my grandfather a recovery and immediately left. Leaving hospital is really a fine line. Going to hospital on the other hand. Cops are known to give escorts to get through traffic etc. I'm an officer with a large department in CA, 
I hate writing tickets to anyone let alone a cop, nurse, doctor, teacher or even clergy. I've written 12 tickets so far this year and I don't plan on writing many more. I will however conduct traffic stops on violators and give them the benefit of the doubt on most occasions. When I stop a vehicle I'm looking for criminal activity not the opportunity to ruin someone's day with a piece of paper with a fine attached to it. My dad was a cop that get pulled over one night by highway patrol while he was off duty and he tried showing the guy his badge. But the highway patrol man grabbed it from him and threw it on the side of the road. Well, my dad was pissed and so were a lot of the other officers when they found out. So in retaliation, my dad's friend that next week pulled over a highway patrol man who was on his was to work in uniform and gave him a ticket. This started a massive feud between the police department and the highway patrol. To the point that the higher ups had to get involved and tell these grown ass men to grow up lol being a cop back in the day sounded like it was a lot of fun. Edit. Since a lot of you keep calling my dad slimy for using his badge I figure I should explain why he was pulled over. He was leaving a parking lot that happened to have a bar in it and the highway patrol was poaching outside. They assumed he had left the bar. He hadn't and pulled him over for that reason alone. My dad was an aeronautical engineer and a major in the Air Force, so he outranked all the cops on base. He used to pull the cops over all the time. Whenever he saw one not wearing a seatbelt, it happened twice when I was in the car with him. So it must have happened a lot more often than that, since he outranked them. They had to sit there while he chewed them out, which was probably an odd experience, since he's so soft spoken. Dad is very serious about seat belt laws. Edit. Just saw the replies. So I'll give some more context. This happened in 1986 or earlier at Wright Patterson Air Force Base in Ohio, before my dad retired from active duty and then went civil service. At that point, he obviously couldn't do it anymore. The two times he pulled over an SF, I never went into the military, so I'm not immersed in the terminology, while I was in the car with him. He followed their car and flashed his lights until they stopped. Then he got out and talked to them through their window. Then they drove off. He didn't actually chew them out, he just talked to them and sent them on their way. He had no desire to get them in trouble. So there was no reporting to their commander. My dad is the least arrogant person I know. He would never try to pull rank on someone when he was the one at fault. I am pretty sure he got at least one speeding ticket himself while on base. This year he retired again after 50 years working for the Air Force. He was a reliability maintainability engineer who worked on a bunch of projects, with probably the most time on the engines for the F-35. Early in his career before he went to fit he also launched spy satellites and a corona program. Wikipedia web page. I just sent my dad an email pointing to this thread, to see if there's anything he would like to clarify or add. I was less than 10 years old when the events I witnessed happened. After all, I was active duty for 4 years and was a medic with an MP battalion. Unless you are a military police officer, or corresponding job in another branch such as Master at Arms for the Navy, you can't pull someone else over, regardless of your rank, let alone pull someone over while your child is in the car. No one will probably see this deep into the post but sharing anyways, my dad is retired police, before he retired. He was on his way to work when he noticed in his rear view a trooper coming up behind him like a bat out of hell. Lights on and siren blazing. Just as any person would do, my father pulled into another lane to let the trooper pass. As soon as my father pulls into the other lane, the trooper slams on the brakes and proceeds to pull my dad over. The reason for pulling of my dad, he didn't use a turn signal when moving over to let the trooper pass, 
Now, if he had the time to pull my father over, he clearly wasn't in any true hurry and shouldn't be speeding, using sirens, and lights, but I digress too much. Despite my father being in full uniform and explaining that he was getting out of the trooper's way as he was very obviously in a hurry, he still got a ticket for failure to use a turn signal. My dad contested and went to court. The trooper didn't show up nor did he file a report so it was thrown out. Shortly after, my father learned that that specific trooper is nicknamed Trooper Diesel and is a notorious asshole, even among his police comrades. My story involves an arrest of a high rank officer's son. I pulled the car over for making a right turn on red. It was posted no turn on red. I pulled the car over there were three teens in the car. 18. Driver. 17. Front passenger. 17. Rear passenger. I asked for his driver's license and noticed a bottle of booze on the floorboard down near the front passenger. Since they were all underage, I asked all occupants to exit the vehicle and attained the driver due to him claiming ownership of the alcohol. As I placed him in my patrol vehicle, he tells me his father was a lieutenant of a neighboring police department. So I asked for his father's phone number and told him that I would release him to his father if he came and picked him up. After the call I searched the vehicle and underneath the driver's seat was a handgun, loaded, with one of the serial numbers filed away. I found another serial number and checked it, stolen. So his father shows up and talks to me. I broke the news that his son was in possession of a stolen gun that happened to have an obliterated serial number. Two major felonies. The fact there was a victim involved meant that I had to charge him with the crime. I called my supervisor out to the scene which interrupted to a full blown argument. Our hands were tied behind our back. So because of the incident. Two of our officers were arrested for minor traffic violations and sent to jail. It was a stupid feud war that lasted a few months until the lieutenant resigned from his position when the chiefs got involved. Not a police officer, but, did you see the video of the police stop in Florida where they pulled over, the state attorney? Florida state attorney pulled over in traffic stop that goes nowhere fast. CNN webpage. I have never heard someone verbally backpedal so fast in my life. That's funny. His voice is cracking the whole time and he rambles. What agency are you with and okay? Have a good day are the only times he seems confident he said the right words. My dad had to arrest an off-duty officer for drunk driving. He was a good guy and a good cop, but it was unacceptable and to make it worse when he was drunk he was trying to tell him that he won't lose his job, cops don't rat cops out etc. Safe to say, regardless of what the news might teach you on similar events he was swiftly fined, charged with a DWI and fired. Edit. My dad and the officer he arrested worked in the same city and saw each other daily. They were good friends to say the least. Not a cop. My dad was a cop for years. In fact he was one of three cops of the small town we lived in. One day, mom was hauling ass through town in my dad's old GTO. He pulls her over, chews her ass out, and writes her a ticket. No one believes me. At least people who don't know my parents. She paid it, but she threatened to fight it in court. Dad said he would make sure to bet there. The moral of the story is, after he gave his own wife a speeding ticket, no one ever tried to slip one past him or get him to give an inch on something again. Made his life much easier, and maybe save mom, as she has always had a lead foot, but this genuinely slowed it down. My mom told me once when she was a young hippie she and her boyfriend ran from their apartments on jackets in a Montreal snowstorm to get a bottle of wine at the depot down the street. On the way back they were stopped by a couple of cops because being hippies and running was suspicious. 
they took them into an alley to question them and did so for about 20 minutes going over the bottle of wine story before finally letting my frozen mother go. But not her filthy long hair of a boyfriend. So mom ran home. Got his jacket and brought it out. They refused to let her give it to him. So mom ran home again and called the cops. Going full damsel in distress about the terrible bullies who had forced her and her boyfriend into an alley and wouldn't let him go or put on a jacket and she was just so frightened and didn't know what to do. Several squad cars flew in. Sirens blaring. Lady, you called the cops. On the cops why yes, I did. Dealing with people who are breaking the law is what cops are for. What happens when a police officer arrests a superior? Most states are at will employment states. So if you pull over the sheriff of the county and you're just one of his deputies, he could fire you on the spot and then remove your powers of arrest and your right to enforce the law. I don't see why this sort of thing can't happen. I believe police forces are unionized, and I think that government employees have a different set of regulations for at will. He would have to fill out paperwork to fire them, so he would still get the ticket. If shit like that happened, then the officer who gets fired would be able to tell his hurt story to the local news. It would be all full PR and the superior officer would obviously be seen by the public and perhaps some higher ups as a bad officer. Superior's ass would be kicked out of a job. Alright, obligatory not a cop, but I have two stories. The first is what we like to call the confrontation. An off-duty uniformed police officer in our city was driving home from the end of his shift and ran a stop sign. Nearly hitting my police officer friend's wife who was a pedestrian in a crosswalk. Cop friend threw his keys at the end of the guy's car after yanking his wife back from getting hit. Uniformed cop screeches to a halt in the middle of the street gets out and starts screaming at my friend. Another off-duty cop from our sitter who was in civilian clothes because we were all out to dinner. Uniform jackass starts screaming at my friend that he was breaking the law and my friend politely informed him that you know, you failed to yield. Other guy also has like a solid 12 inches on my friend. My friend's wife got involved in the screaming match while we were trying to hold her back and let the cops deal with it. I've got 911 pulled up on my phone ready to hit send because if it gets called in by anyone else they're not going to know that my friend is also an off duty officer. After showing his badge, my friend asks the other guy for his badge number, completely ready to call his company. Asshole cop gets back in his car, still screaming that he had right away after not stopping at a stop sign and speeds away, nothing ever came of it, second time was same cop friend was giving me a ride home because I was out at the bar, he very very clearly runs a red light, it's one of those lights where there's two lights about 20 feet apart and as soon as one of them turns the other one turns too, he made it through the yellow of the first one and then just kept going through the red of the second one, he immediately got pulled over, and as we're waiting for the officer to get out of her car and ask for his information, it was just taking so long that he holds his badge out the window like a jackass. She immediately turns the lights off walks up to the car and my friend says I know I was a little late on that light back there. She looks at me and asks me if I'm okay I say yes. She tells him to take it easy next time and he gets away with it. I'm a dispatcher at a police department. Our officers generally don't ticket each other us family members if it is a minor offense. DUIs or anything else serious it doesn't matter who you are. You go to jail. We actually arrested one of our judges for DUI a few years ago. They'll proceed to laugh, handcuff each other and make passionate love before arresting all the illegal immigrants working there. Then they get married. Went undercover to a massage parlor and let the woman give me a happy ending. 
After I finished I went to tip her and she handcuffed me. Turns out she was undercover too. So, for laughs, I handcuffed her. We made passionate love then arrested all of the illegal immigrants who were forced to work there. Been married 14 years this December. LPT, if you are going to get an escort, call the ads that say no black men. Police wouldn't turn down a specific race. They want to bust everyone. I've arrested a handful of cops. I play it right down the middle. I'm not risking my pension for someone else. Had a correction officer, considered Leo up here as they have arrest powers. Drive past me at about 4pm with a citizen yelling at me from the car behind Faye he was drunk and all over the road. Trying to catch up to him he was weaving around cars on the side of the road so much he was almost touching the curb on the other side. Finally caught up to him in his driveway, arrested same. Buck Savage reference, like point 24 at the station. Half hour at least after he stopped drinking. Turns out he works at the jail under my LT brother and was due back to work that night at 11 p.m. He still would have been drunk on his way back to work that night. Have no issues. Would do again. Next time he sees my brother he says our brother arrested me. My brother told me he said, well were you drunk? Guy says yes and brother says, well.